Luke chapter 20, but let me read 1947, or read over 48, so we can get the context of 20. And he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and scribes came upon him with the elders. So what is chapter 20? Seeking to destroy Jesus. Seeking to discredit him in front of the people. Because we are the scholars of the scriptures and this man has not known the letters thereof so what we'll do is we'll put him to shame before the people and we'll be back on top again that's what's going on because what you're going to see is you're going to see questions about scripture and since jesus was a carpenter's son up north he would have nothing being a northerner he would know nothing about the bible from us people down south and it came to pass that on one of those days as he taught the people in the temple notice the people are listening to him and not the chief scribes the pharisees he's got the bible lesson in their church So would you be possible for you to walk in someone else's church and start teaching them right of the Bible? Jesus did it. Because it's his house. Verse 46. They were stealing from God. And preached the gospel. The chief priests and scribes came upon him with the elders. And spake to him saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? And who is he that gave thee this authority? All right. Why are all the animals gone? Why is the cash table gone? Why are the tables gone? And why on earth are you teaching these people? We want our church back. We want the table in the back with the CDs, the cassette tapes, and all the other stuff. We want that back. We're making money. And how on earth are you teaching these people? That's our job. And he answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one thing. And answer it. So they say it's wrong to answer a question with a question. Jesus did it. English teacher. And if Jesus did it, it's proper. How dare you say what Jesus done is improper. The baptism of John. Was it from heaven or of men? Ooh. Wow, we jumped all the way to the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. We're talking about something 33 years ago. And they reasoned with themselves. Yeah, 33, yeah, three and a half years ago. And they reasoned with themselves saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then believe ye not? him all right so if john did baptism of heaven then god ordained it and we can't say that you know why because i don't know if this gospel tells you or another god they did not get baptized of john a few of them did but not all <clears throat> all right option number two but if we say of men, all the people will stone us, for they persuade they <clears throat> they be persuaded that John was a prophet. So if we answer number two, we we fear the people that are going to kill us because John was a prophet. We don't believe he was a prophet, but they do. Jesus said he was a prophet. So no matter what jesus would be god jesus would be important because he's already told the people remember there's no greater man that was born of a woman but of john and they answered that they could not tell whence it was 
And Jesus said to them, Neither tell I you by what authority do these things. What a great thing. Listen, if you can't answer the matters of a man that was prophesied in Isaiah, what scripture do you know then? <laughs> Bam, scripture number one. Then began he to speak to the people this parable. A certain man, God, planted a vineyard. Isaiah would be Jerusalem. We went right back to Isaiah. Notice that. Isaiah told us about John the Baptist and his entire ministry. Now we're running back to Isaiah. I got a note here, chapter 5, 1 through 7. I believe that's it. Where Isaiah speaks about Jerusalem being a vineyard of God. And let it, oh, by the way, he said a parable. Jesus will tell you if it's a parable or not. A couple of chapters in here that people debate is a parable. People, Jesus never said a parable. And he let it forth to husbandmen. That's the Pharisees, the scribes, the chief priests, blah, 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 the elders. And went into a far country for a long time. How long? The entire Old Testament. Because watch, the sun's going to come. And at a season he sent a servant that would be the Old Testament prophets. To the husbandmen. That they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husband beat him and sent him away empty. You would find that the prophets. You would find these the kings of Jerusalem. You would find this the people of Jerusalem. They wanted to do this and kill Jeremiah. They weren't happy with Ezekiel. Again, he sent another servant. And they beat him also. Hebrews 11 speaks. I think it's Hebrews 11 speaks of all these people. Saw to have. Made an outcast. Going to dwell in caves. And beat him shamefully and sent him away empty. Again he sent a third. And they wounded him also and cast him out. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, God, what shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Anybody know who that is? Alright. It may be they will reverence him when they see him. So did God intended to send Jesus to the Jewish people for the Jewish people to reject him? Absolutely not. The preordained election of the foundation of the world is that Jesus would have to know. He said, listen, they'll reverence him. And the free will that God's given men, they do not. How's that for free will? The intention of God to send his son to these people that they may reverence him. But when the husbandmen saw him, they reasoned among themselves. Chapter 1947. This is the hare. Come, let us kill him. What does destroy mean, 47? Means kill. That the inheritance may be ours. Okay, see, they want to get Jesus out of the way. He's causing a stir. He's taking the worship of them unto God. He's teaching in the temple now. We can't have none of this. Because we're not important anymore. We don't have the people under bondage no more. They're not washing their hands no more because the disciples don't wash their hands. They're not afraid as the Sabbath as they were, as we were in control. So they cast him out of the vineyard. Out of the vineyard. Hebrews says outside the gate. So when you go over there and you have a certain church religion, bounce you around, here's the place that Jesus walked, here's the place that Jesus died. Excuse me, Mr. Frugaloo. You saying Jesus died here? Yes, he did. The Bible says he died outside the gate. Now get out of here, you thief, you devil. 
you liar. He died outside the gate. He didn't die in the vineyard. He died for the vineyard, not in it, and killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy these husbandmen, and shall give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. God forbid what? That God would turn the vineyard over to Gentiles. The Romans, 70 AD. The Catholics, 2016. The Arabians, 2016. And who else is over there, 2016? Everyone's over there. And you got buses and buses of Gentile. Oh, this is where G Yeah, okay. And he beheld them and said, What is this? then that is written Ooh, we're going to go to scripture now the stone which the builders rejected the same has become the head of the corner read that in for in first peter that's jesus christ that stone that daniel said will destroy nations that stone will become a stumbling block to those who do not believe that stone will kill those that rejected Jesus Christ. That stone will be a foundation stone to those that do believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That stone will be the foundation stone of the millennial kingdom of the Jews. That's a big stone there. Whosoever shall fall upon the st that stone shall be broken. The Pharisees. But... Daniel 2, 34, 35. On whosoever it shall fall, it will grind into powder. You don't want to trip onto this stone, and you don't want this stone to fall upon you. Second Advent. Yep, if you believe on the stone. The foundation. No other man can lay a foundation. That, that is Jesus Christ. What is a foundation? Jesus said a man that built, built digged about the ground and built his house upon a rock. And when all the storms came, it was settled upon the rock. But he that built this house upon the sand, destruction. And this is all going on in the temple. All right, so 48, he's teaching the people. He's interrupting chapter 20. He's teaching the people about the vineyard, about Isaiah 5. He's teaching them about the Pharisees. And they're like, oh, wow, great. And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him. They feared the people for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. They were listening. They were going to take him. But the people. You know, one of the greatest fears of man is people. Pride. They knew exactly what Jesus was saying. They knew exactly what the guilt of their heart was. And they still crucified him. You know how you get rid of guilt? One of two ways. You either put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Or you kill it. With a hot iron. And they watched him. You can watch Jesus and not for good. You can go to church and not for good. You can read your Bible, not for good. Somebody had to come up with that list of the contradiction of the Bible. Somebody had, that first list had to pop up somewhere by someone who read the Bible. They watched him and sent forth spies. Military campaign. You go send spies in the area that you're going to attack to see what the reconnaissance is, see what the, the situation is, what can we do? Which should feign themselves. Just men. Shall I put that in another word? Uh, 
what word can I use? Let's see. Frame would be um, actors, actresses, a script. Pretending to be something they're not. A script. What's the script of this movie? What's the script of this television show? What is the script of this play? Pretending. Just men. They weren't just men, but they were acting like it. Better watch your words in church. That they might hold, they might take hold of his words. See, you can take hold of the word of God, but not for good. They're trying to catch Jesus at his words. I mark my Bible. I mark it for learning, for getting closer to God, to reveal the scripture. Some people mark their Bibles. Uh, uh -huh. I've got notes in here that have nothing to do with the Bible, but things that happened to my in church where I had showed my wife, hey, what's that over You see that over here? And I'll read that. Yeah, I remember that when it happened in that church. I remember when it happened in church. One of the things we just read across today had the word stage with a cross with a, with a question mark. And he said stage about that. Uh, yep. Look where, where are we going with that? Mm -hmm. Call the altar stage. Words. You got to watch what words you use. Children, we're going to memorize our script for. Mm -hmm. Let's let the people come up and worship at the stage. Be careful of the words, because they be held, might take hold of his word. Jesus said in Matthew 11 that every word that I know that you spoke, you'll give an account. They're trying to give an account of Jesus, and he's faithful. He is God. That So they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor of Rome. <coughs> They've already had intentions of bringing Jesus to the Roman government. Don't think that that kangaroo court on the night of Gethsemane was, oh, okay, now I got an idea. Let's bring him to the Pilate. No. Since Luke chapter 20, they were going to bring him to Pilate all along. They just need to find an accusation, which they never did, remind you. They're looking for accusations right now. What about your life, Christian? If somebody was out to get you and they were to take a notebook and write down the things you say and do, could they bring you before a court and say, I find no fault in him, or would they be able to find guilty? I'll tell you what they'll find for me, guilty. But Jesus, Pilate said with all these spies in their notebooks, I find no fault. These people couldn't even come up with charges to bring the pilot. And they asked him, the spies, here we go, saying, Master, again, you don't mean it. I'm a Christian. Oh, Jesus. We know that thou sayest and teachest rightly. Look at that. You say, well, that could be a lie. I don't think so. I think their hearts spoke out to God by God, by the Holy Spirit, before the people. The people would hear these people say, hey, we know you teach right. He's been teaching them. All right. These people say that he's teaching right, so we should listen to him more. Neither acceptest thou the person of any. But teaches the way of God truly. Now that is a great profession from a liar. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? 1 Peter 2, Titus 3, Romans 13. Why has everyone got to question taxes? But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, Why tempt ye me? He's, remember, the people are there. He's in the temple. He's been teaching them. He's been interrupted. What about taxes? And the people are like, Whoa, yeah. You know, when you say taxes, these people have raised the eyebrows and the entire multitude has been listening to Jesus. You have now 
got the attention of the people, what word would get the attention of the people? Taxes. That'd be almost without going in and also say free food. So these people have brought up an attention-getting subject of all the people, but for the reason to get Jesus to be found guilty before the people. They knew this word tax would attach the people to their damnation, not Jesus. So here we go. So Jesus tells the people, they're tempting me. Now you get this picture. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> Show me a penny. Whose image, you know, they would give him the penny. Whose image and superscription has it? They're looking at it. Read between the periods. They don't realize what Jesus is doing to them. The answer said, Caesar's. And he said, unto, Render therefore unto Caesar the things that be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. Now, where else have the people heard this doctrine that he's now teaching? Set thy heart on things above, not things on the earth, for the things that are in heaven, are, there's no rust, there's no corruption, there's no thief, but the things on the earth, they can be, you know. He's already taught this doctrine. The people already heard, especially the disciples. And he's telling us, hey, render the things that belong to the government to the government, and render the things that belong to God to be belonging to God. What wrong is that answer? Now remember, he's in the temple. There are two, there are two money, you know what I'm saying, two currencies. There's the Roman currency, and there's the temple currency. So he says, if it belongs to the government, don't write a complaint, give it to the government. You know why a lot of people complain and gripe about churches? Because they're built on property that doesn't pay taxes while they pay taxes. Are you saying the church should pay taxes? Render to the government that belongs to the government. That green piece of thing, you show me every single one of those green pieces of thing. It says the United States of America a federal note well I earned it and how many hours did you play around and fool around on the bus this time to get that money I believe if the government were to tax me 100% today if I believe in God and do what God tells me to do he'll still supply my needs even if I gotta pay 100% tax I believe in God and not the government wasn't Jesus brought to Bethlehem to be born by taxes? Don't taxes pay for that nice black thing you drive on? Doesn't taxes pay for those nice lights that you can you can drive under? Don't pay taxes. Have everyone not pay taxes and, and watch for the potholes and not to be fixed. And all the dead animals just keep lying on the dead roads. So, render the things unto Caesar, the things which be Caesar's, and unto the God, which the things be God. I don't preach like any other preacher. And they could not take hold of his words. I did. I did to salvation, the glory of God, I took hold of Jesus' words. And except for a sick circ uh, circumstances beyond my control, I try to read the Bible every day with my family every day I try to but they could not take hold of his word before the people see they wanted the people as a witness they wanted the people to stone him How bad are these people? Hosanna to the highest! Here he comes! And when they're yelling before Pilate, they're angry yelling, crucify him. These Jews, man, at a toss of a coin, could 
uphold a riot. That's what the Roman government hated about them. That's why the Roman government would give in to them, because these people were stiff-necked, they were bad, they were horrible. No one likes them but God. And they marveled at his answer and held their peace. What on, uh, he just, what on earth did just happen here? Wait a minute. We were supposed to catch him. And, oh. Pooh. Go home and check our 1040s now after that one. And just think about who was there. In the group Matthew the tax collector and Matthew told us about that story didn't he certified by a public tax man of the Roman government that Jesus said pay your taxes okay so don't pay your taxes and I believe you'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ you'll have to give an account because the Bible says render to Caesar when talking about taxes don't pay your taxes? Okay, fine. Some churches do, some churches don't. Then came hit to him certain the Sadducee. You know, I used to have a cousin that watched wrestling, so when I would go over there, I, I had to watch wrestling with him. And one of the things they had was you get two guys on a team, two teams, four people. They get out there in the match, and when one's about had it, he tried to make it over there, and he tagged the guy, and then the guy would come out into the ring and start fighting. The other guy would go back, you know, he rest up and stuff like that. And this is what I picture here, wrestling match. The, the, the chief priest make it to the edge, they tap the Sadducees, oh man, we just got busted, get in there, go get him. Okay, here it is. Now the Sadducees done it. Ding, ding, here we are in the ring. Now watch this. The Bible was written by man, which deny that there was that there is any resurrection. That's an important footnote in there of what we're going to do. And they asked him, saying, Master, there's that master again. Moses wrote the law. Moses wrote I admit, this is the law unto us. If any man's brother die having a wife, and he die without children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Aren't you glad we're not under the law today, wife? I mean, what if you, I mean, that guy you married to, I mean, for you, he's the hunkiest of all hunks. He's the Prince Charming, and he's got the ugliest looking brother ever in town. Or his brother is a scoundrel or a drunk. Or... or Okay, his brother is just no good. But he is. And you got to think about, before you marry this man, if I don't have any children by this man, this man died. I'm stuck with his brother. That was the law. Now, you would be thinking like, like, Rue, oh, please say no, please say no, please say no, please say no, please, say no. Please. please give me Boaz, please, Lord God, please. Oh, Lord, I'll make whatever he wants every time he wants it, Lord God. Just let him say no. See, the Bible is Bible. Yeah, and back then, sometimes the brother could be a much older man. Yeah, it's, it's just weird. Because they had kids, like, up until... Well, actually, not older, because the, cause usually the firstborn got married, then down the line. That was probably a set thing. Because that firstborn son, I mean, he was the of all these. And if he didn't have a child, then it would be the next the next one. And it would be in the I name think, of the brother. In Ruth's case, yeah. I, I think the man was older. Yeah, we'll have to check. But yeah, I mean, just, you just got to think about that poor woman. Why won't you marry me? What? Your brother. In this case, I got to marry him. You kill your brother, and I'll marry you. And this poor woman had seven different husbands. And then, what is it? There's seven brides for seven husbands? Brothers. Where do they think you got that title from? Yeah, right. You gotta wonder. <laughs> Alright, so, raise up seed unto his brother. And you know, 
the brother ain't going to care about that child you just gave birth to because it's not really his. It's his brother's name. There's one man in the Bible that had this case right here and he had the relations but prevented the birth. And God was angry. There were there were therefore seven brethren and the first took a wife and died without children. The second took her to wife and, die, and died childless. And, and I think the story is just carrying on here. The third took her and like married the seven also. That could be a true story. And they left no children and died. Last of all, the women, the woman died also. So the trouble was with the woman, not the men. All right. Now. Then came unto him certain the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection. Therefore, in the resurrection, how do you know that they're attempting Jesus? All right. Yes, yeah, so I see. So you will have people come up in your, whatever you do, public ministry, whatever you do. I'm not going to suggest one or the other. Knocking on doors, passing out gospel tracts, going up to people, starting a conversation, whatever you do. You will have people that come up and say to you, and they don't believe what they're saying. In the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? For the seven had her to wife. That's an interesting question, because what do you do with Christians who have been married uh, several times? Death, became a widow, got married again. This woman, she became a widower seven times. So the question is, as a widow, seven times, now when she gets to heaven, they're going to fight over her? The Muslims would say yes. But it would be the man with seven women, or wherever many. The man set a footnote about that. If you get virgins in heaven, once you're done with them, they're not virgins anymore. Just add that little time over there. All right, so they all had her to wife. Jesus answering said unto them. I'm looking down here. Where it is. Another, another gospel said, you err not knowing the scriptures. I like that one. Put that in there. You err not knowing the scriptures. The children of this world marry. And are given into marriage but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection well guess what I'm going up in the resurrection am I the rapture from the dead if I die I'm going up in the grave if I'm alive I'm going up neither marry nor are given in marriage so I'll be married to Jesus Christ as the bride of Jesus Christ. If I go marry any other woman in heaven, I'm an adulterer. And Revelation 21 or 22 says adulterers won't be in heaven. So I will bound myself faithfully for all eternity to one man, Jesus Christ. I got to say, as a Christian on this earth, I've stepped aside from Jesus Christ many times for another lover. Flesh, Satan, the world. Whenever I take my eyes off Jesus and put it on somebody else, I'm committed in adultery and whoredom against Jesus Christ as a Christian. And you'd not find me misinterpreting the scriptures because the scriptures apply adultery not only in sexual relations, but whoredoms not only in sexual relations, but also sin. I am unfaithful to Jesus Christ today, some way or another. I've been faithful to my wife, but I have not been faithful to Jesus Christ. I can't say that. One day in eternity, I forever will be. Nothing will get me ahead of my groom, Jesus Christ. Um, neither can they die anymore. Look at that. You may have a funeral director in heaven, but you'll never need him anymore. 
You may have grave dig diggers that are in heaven, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You'll never need them again. So there is no more death. Neither marry, nor given in marriage. And you got to really think about it. I've been married twice, two saved wives. I get the glory. I'm saved. You got to say I have two wives? That's anti Bible. Mormons don't go to heaven unless they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, David and Solomon. Yes, David and Solomon, but did you ever read where God approved of it? What did Paul say with the permission of the Holy Spirit telling us that he speak, he's speaking of his own will, but the Holy Spirit is guiding him? Let, let the husband have his wife. Let the wife have her husband. It's never in the plural. Never. And if, she, if her husband dieth, then she can go marry only in the Lord. See? So, there's no marry, there's no marriage. Neither can they die anymore. For they are equal unto the angels. <coughs> How's that? The only difference I have with the angels is I am washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. They're not. That's why angels can't witness. They don't know what it is to be redeemed. But imagine one day I'll be Angel Stiley or whatever my new name will be. Imagine I am now called Saint Stiley Hayward. They just made that old fart in India a saint. That wicked woman was made a saint. You got to die in that religion to be a saint. I'm alive and well. Even in Psalm says, even when I do die, I'm still a saint by Jesus Christ. I'm also as an angel. I don't see no wings and never will see wings and are the children of God I am a child of God by the Holy Spirit the adoption of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that's believe it or not here we are in Luke 20 and that's us also along with those that do get right as Jews to God we can take this with I'm not all Paul. Don't think whatever Paul says, Paul. But with the Pauline doctrines to the church, I can apply this to me because I am a child of God. So I'm going to be equal to the, to the angels and I'm not going to get married. I'll be married to Jesus Christ. Being the children of the resurrection. Again, I'm going to be resurrected. Now that the dead are raised... What did they say? We denied the resurrection? Notice how Jesus keeps saying resurrection, resurrection, rise of the dead, rise of the dead. Man, he, he's got them and he's, you know, what my mom used to do to me to torture me. I get a cut, man, she put that iodine right on there. Oh, mom, you hate me. And Jesus taking that iodine, a little salt in there. You know, aren't we salt? And he's digging into them. While the people are watching and listening, he is attacking their religion. What would Jesus do? He's taking his religion and he's putting it in the dirt. That's what he's doing. The people go, oh, you're mocking people's religion. So did Jesus. You mock me, I mock your religion. Now, that the dead are raised. Even Moses, you said Moses, Moses wrote, I'm going to quote from Moses. Here we go. Hey, isn't Jesus great? Showed at the bush, so the fiery bush was a true story by Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. you imagine what Jesus Christ is going to do at the judgment seat of Christ in the great white throne judgment? catching us at our word every word idle word that we speak we shall give an account thereof imagine jesus using our words to hang us he's doing it with the sadducees right now i bet you they wish they never opened their mouth i bet you those uh chief priests never wish they opened their mouth be careful how you open your mouth be careful what you say you may give an account one day. You may reap what you sow. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush. 
when he called the Lord, capital L, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living. For all live unto... In reality, there is no death. Just your body dies. There is eternity. There is an afterlife. After you close your eyes to death here, you will wake up somewhere. Heaven or hell. You are alive. You'll not go into hell asleep. You'll not go into heaven asleep. There's a guy I knew that was in a wheelchair. Greatest friend I would have in the beginning of my Christian walk, I guarantee right now he's up there leaping around, standing before Jesus. You know what I mean? No, he's in the grave. Yeah, his body's in the grave, but his soul is with the Lord. I've got family who died, and their souls are alive in torments today. They're not sleeping in hell. They're burning. They're suffering. I'm not saying that because I like it. I say it because I've witnessed to them. But there is really no death. Your body may not feel, but your soul does. And certain of the scribes answers, oh, no, come on. Tag team number three. Wait a minute. He just shut down two people with their mouth. Would you have the nerve to come up and say, <laughs> I'd be like, okay, let's go home. A certain of the scribes answered and said, Master, thou hast said well. Ooh. Look at those words. And after that, they durst not ask him any questions at all. Put them down in their place. They had to admit before the people, before the disciples, man, you're right. Now, that was not a big chunk of humble pie. Now, what did Pilate say? For envy. This made them mad. Because all the people, he just look at the smirks on their face as they're looking at those guys. You, I can think of a couple words right now, but you, you, what have you been doing to us all these years? And they turn to Jesus with his big old smile, with his big old hope, and we're going to crucify you later. <laughs> All right, now, ding, ding, here we go, next round. And he said unto them, now Jesus is going to open his mouth. Listen, they're bloody, they're wounded. Jesus is not going to be a Samaritan and take care of their wounds. He's going to make it more. What would Jesus do? How say that Christ is David's son? The grandson of David, Matthew 1. Because Jesus Christ is in the line of David. The kingly line through the adoption of Joseph. But David himself said in the book of Psalms, we're going to quote the Bible now. We're going to quote David. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. Jehovah Witnesses have a hard time with this. Till I make thy enemies thy footstool. That is Acts 1. Jesus ascended into heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father. Still today. David therefore calling him Lord. How is he then his son? Easy. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ through Mary and the adoption of Joseph. Joseph became part of David's line through the adoption. You have to acknowledge, Mr. Jehovah Witness, you have to acknowledge that Jesus is man. Okay, we got that. Jesus is God. There he is. I, he is God, man, 100% God, 100% man through David, but through God. And none of these guys will do it. Then in the audience of all the people, we've got to get that in there, he said unto his disciples, there's a great mound of people. Beware of the scribe. Ooh. 
which desire to walk in long robes. And there they are. <laughs> Imagine me getting out there with one of them Catholic priests. Hey, look at this guy wearing his outfit so we all know who he is. Well, who do you think you are? I'm Saint Angelic Stiley Hayward. Where do you get that from? I got it from the Bible. And love greetings in the marketplace. In the market. Hi, Father. How you doing, Father? Hi, Sister. Hi. How do you know them? And the highest seats in the synagogues. Jewish places. The Catholic priest has stolen the Jewish titles. <laughs> They just change their churches to protect their identity of Satan. And the chief rooms of the feast. Where do all the Catholic priests go? Don't they go to weddings? Don't they go to funerals? Don't they go to the meals afterwards? Aren't they invited to the, the seats of commerce? Isn't the, uh, always behind the President of the United States one of those guys wearing a black outfit? Except for this President? Even behind the same bush, whichever one it is, I forgot which one it is. I noticed that Roman Catholic priest had to be standing behind him in all the the White House footages. Which devour widows' houses. How? You pay us and we can get your hubby out of purgatory. I've seen it. I've lived it. I've seen him at work. And for a show, make long prayers. I've seen Baptists make long prayers. And the same shall receive greater damnation. There's Jesus speaking about hell again. And he's speaking about different degrees of burning in hell. How's that one? People of religion will get a greater damnation than the Laodiceans. The lay people. Your priest will get a greater damnation than you will in hell. How's that for a punishment? 